Let's continue our presentation and this is the summary of our discussion regarding OpenGL functions managing uh, the textures. The texture object is configured by these two calls, uh, generate textures and bind texture and generate textures returns back, rather populates this texture buffer ID, the unique integer identifier of the memory allocated for internal texture image. Then GL bind texture activates this uh, texture object and makes it count. Texture unit is a piece of hardware that has access to the texture image. Okay, and uh, GL active uh, texture function activates the texture unit in context of the current texture memory buffer, which is already bound, and makes the requested texture unit current. So notice this format of the input parameter. There is a constant named GL texture zero, which provides access the numeric value uh, of the first available texture unit in OpenGL hardware. And then we can refer to other texture units because there could be multiple texture units available uh, in hardware, and we can activate them by adding the actual number, which is zero based index of the texture unit that you want to activate and make current by just adding to this base number GL texture zero. So we can say unit one equals one and say GL texture zero plus uh, unit one, unit two, unit three. So this will be the way for us to activate other uh, units present in the hardware. By default, texture unit 0 is set to be current and active to begin with. And when you change the active uh, unit, uh, then all subsequent texture operations uh, like bind texture, upload texture information, specify texture preferences right here, will manipulate the texture bound to the current texture unit. Remember to use this constant for the base value to form your indices to refer to multiple texture units. Internal texture image format. So we're talking about this uh, internal texture image already loaded into texture memory buffer from the CPU side. So compared to other OpenGL memory buffers that we use, for example, for vertex uh, attributes, uh, they're just linear in their nature. So the GPU keeps the same identical copy of the data that we create on the CPU side. However, the format of the texture image uh, is controlled by the GPU hardware, and the image we provide is transformed into internal OpenGL format. So it's not necessarily the same format that we allocate like our bitmap image on the CPU side. So this explains the complexity of all of these parameters that we use when calling texture image 2D to load the information, the texture data from the CPU to the texture memory buffer. So internally, GL text image 2D executes GPU pixel transfer operation, which does the conversion from the CPU format to the internal GPU format. And the fragment shader gets texture data by individual texels. Remember, texels are texture elements and they simply represent uh, specific colors that we can retrieve by the texture sampler connected with the texture unit and it will return back the color that we can use in our fragment shader to assign to the fragments. The fragment uh, shader uses sampler data types something that we refer to as texture sampler, which is a uniform parameter over here, to access the texture data. So for every OpenGL texture type, there is a corresponding sampler type, for example, sampler 1D or sampler 2D. And this is how the texture sampler is declared in the fragment shader. Uh, 
I will say uniform sampler 2D and you can give it the name. Sampling is a process of fetching data from the texture object and the sampling is done in the fragment shader, right? just like we discussed earlier. So it's typically uh, this color, this, this resulting color returned by the texture sampler to our uh, fragment shader is used to mix it with our lighting computations. For example, this color can be used uh, as a base color for diffuse light. Okay, uh, so uh, we are assuming that the vertex shader, of course, receives the UV coordinates, the new uh, vertex uh, attributes. Okay, and it just gets as input uh, parameter right here. It's a vector of two components. Remember, UV is just coordinates uh, in range from 0 to 1. And it immediately passes the coordinates to the output variable texture coordinates, which gets passed over to the fragment shader right here, right? So the fragment shader gets the interpolated uh, texture coordinates for every fragment. And then we uh, declare this uh, sampler a variable right here. And to retrieve the color, what happens here is that we call texture 2D and give it two parameters. The sampler 2D is one parameter and the second parameter is the texture coordinate. And what gets back is the color. Right, so texture 2D basically returns back a four component vector which gets sampled from our internal texture image. So a typical flow of events is to compute the intensity of the diffuse light using the dot product of the normal vector and light vector and then uh, compute the final color by multiplying the result of this dot product by the color returns by the texture sampler. And texture 2D is just a function that takes the sampler as a parameter and texture coordinates as the second parameter. A few more notes about the texture sampler data type. It's absolutely unlike other basic types in GLSL, like vectors or matrices. The sampler can only be declared as the global scope uniform variable, cannot be created as a local variable inside any functions. The sampler does not have any value, so you cannot mix it with any other arithmetic operations. And the only use of the sampler type is a parameter to a function. Just like we saw in our previous example, we call texture 2D to retrieve diffuse color. And then uh, here, the only things that you can do with the sampler type is that if you define your own functions, you can pass them as a parameter and the number of built-in functions also take sampler as parameters. On this slide, we're talking about the texture units and the OpenGL has an array of these texture units, which are also known as texture image units or image units or texture units and one unit represents a single texture because that provides access to the internal texture image to our texture sampler and the sampler uniform in the shader has to be connected to a specific image unit in order to be able to start sampling the colors from the image and of course we already discussed this part where we say uh, make a specific texture unit uh, active relative to GL texture zero. So this is the reference to the zero unit. So we specify our own unit. I use it as an example, just unit zero right here. Uh, and we uh, activate the unit. And then once the unit is activated, we pass the value to the texture sampler using its unique handle ID and pass the parameter, the value of the actual unit zero. And notice that in this uniform call that we make to tell the texture sample what is your texture unit to connect to, we don't use the base value for the texture unit. We just specify zero based index of the texture unit. So that's just a strange mix of these two uh, things and that's uh, due to some le uh, legacy issues that exist um, in the development of OpenGL.
also regardless whether texture sampler is one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional uh, when we set this uh, value of the active texture unit uh, we always call gl uniform one i which typically used to set the scalar values the integer scalar values in the shader code